Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to you. I'm your host Mehboobuddin Ahmed for today's edition of Good Morning with Ikra. Brothers and sisters, I hope you had a wonderful evening yesterday and inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with a wonderful day as well. Today I have two very special guests. The first of them who is uh, Mr. Anwar Mirza who is from the Ahmadi Jamaat. I just need to state that he's not representing the Jamaat. He's here independently. He's also a speaker on international politics and, uh, is, and he'll be here with us discussing his own understanding on the belief of our Ahmadi uh, brethren. Uh, also with me, I have uh, another guest, uh, this, his brother Akbar Ahmed uh, Chaudhry. He is of the highest uh, profile reverts from Ahmadiyya to Islam. He has co-authored one of the standard Ahmadiyya texts read by Ahmadis world over. He was also a prime instructor for the annual Talim course and has also produced, directed and presented his own show for three years on Ahmadi media. Uh, also an editor of the English magazine and a webmaster who launched the first Ahmadiyya website in 1994. Gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to the show. Uh, Mr. Mirza, how would you like to uh, greet our viewers? Well, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. As uh, Mr. Baboob has just mentioned, I am an uh, Ahmadi and uh, I have been very kindly invited uh, by them to represent and to tell our belief or my belief or what Ahmadiyat is and uh, inshallah ta'ala that's about it the main thing is that uh, the main idea is to bring all the Ummah under the flag of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and follow his uh, uh, hadith, follow his sunnah and follow the Quran that's the teaching, that is the main thing. And uh, he is the last Khatamun Nabiin, he's the last prophet, I believe in that. Quran is the last book, I believe in that. And uh, Muhammad Sallallahu is the last Nabi of Sharia, and his Sharia is the last, and no changes can come into that Sharia. That is my belief. And uh, I also believe that in the later days, a reformer as prophesied in the Hadith, a promised Messiah was to descend to revive the same religion of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to teach and to renew and revive the Muslim Ummah for the same teaching and bring them under the flag of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is the highest and the last Prophet. Jazakallah Mr. Mirza, thank you for that. Um, brothers and sisters, I must clarify, today is not an argument, it is not a debate, this is a discussion for us to understand one another. This is a chance for the Muslims to understand our Ahmadiyya brethren, and for our Ahmadiyya brethren to understand why, what, I'm, uh, what Muslims believe as well, and why they hold the views that they do about them. Uh, one thing I need to uh, clarify, which I didn't explain as well, that uh, I think uh, Brother Akbar but you actually you reverted to Islam as well in yep. 2003. Yep. I, don't, I don't think I think that's something I missed out. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you just want to greet our viewers as well and sure. just explain a bit about sure. yourself. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, assal assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Uh, I was born into the Ahmadiyya community, and uh, for a long time I was um, a part of them. Uh, towards the end of the 1990s and beginning of uh, the year. 2000, 2001, I started to think about uh, where was this community going? I mean, we live in a modern society which has, um, uh, with uh, political problems for Islam, for the, for the Ummah and everything else. And what I found in the Ahmadiyya that it, it had become a cult. Some part in, the, in its last uh, 50 to 60 years, it had uh, become a cult where any type of questioning or dissent was not allowed. Their teachings, just like uh, Brother uh, uh, Anwar just uh, mentioned, appears to be uh, very straightforward. But once you dig into uh, the concept that they hold about uh, Khatme Nabuvat or the concept that they hold about um, 
uh, about uh, being the last prophet or the, the concept that they hold about the rest of the, of the Ummah, there is a big gulf between what uh, they claim and what they profess. Uh, and uh, this is what drove me uh, to accept Islam. And Alhamdulillah, once I joined the big uh, community of uh, Muslims, I feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel at home. I feel at home in Islam. And my reason for being here is to share my experience and uh, to, to tell my Ahmadi brothers and sisters that it is not a scary um, world as they are led to, uh, led to believe within that, uh, within that organization, within that cult. So that, that's why I'm, uh, uh, I'm here with you today. Mashallah, mashallah. Uh, Jazakallah both of you gentlemen for being here today. I know uh, you've had a bit of a long journey and we do sincerely appreciate that, the effort you've made. Uh, I want to start off today, inshallah, by um, discussing some of the claims that Ghulam Ahmed Mirza Saab made about himself. Uh, some of the claims I have, his successive claims were, in 1880 he claimed that he began to receive divine revelation. In 1882, he claimed to be a mujaddid, a, revi a revivalist. In 1883, he claimed that he is Adam, Maryam, and Ahmed. In 1891, there were two claims of, firstly, he is the metaphorical Messiah, and secondly, Jesus, son of Mary. In 1892, he claimed he is the master of Kun Fayakun, be and it is, meaning that God gave him the authority over be and it is. In 1894, he claimed he is the Messiah and the Mahdi. In 1899, he claimed he is the shadow and the reincarnation of the Prophet. And in 1904, he claimed that he is Krishna. Uh, Mr. Mirza, yes, sir. of these claims, uh, are these the claims, do you agree with these claims and uh, do you believe they're valid? Um, well, before I answer that, uh, can, I, can I say that you know, during the time of uh, Badr, the, the Battle of Badr, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam threw the sand and the pebbles, it is said, and we all believe, you know, all the Muslim believe, that it was said that it's not Muhammad, Allah said, revealed to him, it's not you who threw the sand on the enemy, it is the Allah who threw. So, consider, taking these sort of examples from the basic Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the metaphorical language has been used in the Torah, in the Old Testament, New Testament, and in the Quran, uh, Quran Hakim as well. Allah has been uh, known to mention Bani Israel, children, this is a sort of affection. When you love somebody, when you devote yourself completely into somebody higher than you, as Promised Messiah has said in his more than 85 books, that all what he has received, this blessing, is due to his uh, subordinate position and being uh, you know being in love with prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is in all his books in his poetry in persian in urdu in arabic he has said that all what i have received is through the blessing of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam i have nothing and and, so, and he has also said and i think mr akbar will agree uh, brother akbar will agree on that he said that if all my good deeds, all my worships, all my sacrifices, all my good deeds are put in one side. Right, carry on. They are not, and if I, if I am not, uh, if my love for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for Allah Ta'ala is not there, all, if I am not under his subordination, if I am not his real ghulam, then everything is worthless. So that shows his... Just, just staying on the claims, yeah. uh, are these claims, do you agree with no, these uh, claims? Please ask me. As in, uh, one of them is that he is Adam, Maryam and Ahmed. Do yes. you agree with this? You see, this Would you, and, uh, and yeah. just two, sure. uh, that he is Adam, Ahmed and Maryam, uh, and that he is Jesus, son of Mary. Okay, yeah. uh, for, the, for these two questions, you see, uh, when we say metaphorical language used Adam, what did Adam do? Adam was the beginning of a new, a new, Islamic thing, you know, as we remember as children, 
Adam is the beginning, as far as we know, uh, the Adam al-Islam. The human beings have been, you know, before that, uh, the science has proved that. They are, they sweat, they fear. How, how, the how did, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicate to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Uh, through Jibreel uh, al-Islam. And how did he com communicate to uh, Ghulam Ahmed Mirza sahab? Uh, uh, you know, he also uh, spoke to him through Jibreel and through his angels as all the wahi and ilham to all the pious people, you know, even... God spoke to uh, Shah Abdul Qadir Jalani, Rahmatullah, humble Ibn Arabi. God revealed to them all these mujaddids, you know, all these Waliullahs, Hazrat Ali, Hazrat, uh, so many pious people in the history of Islam. Even before uh, Muslim was, I believe, Mr. Ghulam was born. Allah has been talking to his people. His way, this is called Inam. And Allah's Inam does never stop. Similarly, he revealed to uh, Mirza Ghulam Muhammad of Qadiyan, as you said, that he revealed to him gradually, obviously. And as for Brahini Amdi is concerned, if you know the history, as you claim to be, Muhammad Hussain Batalvi, he was a very big scholar in India at that time. He was the head of Ali Hadith. And in his, in his, before he claimed, you see, it's the history of prophets. Everybody claims that Rasulullah was Sadiq, I mean, but when he claimed right. I'm a prophet, people turn against him. Muhammad Hussain Batalvi wrote. You, you have to be very brief very at this brief. now because I want to move on to the next question. He said, 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 he اگر کوئی ہے تو وہ بتائے کہ جس طرح مرزا غلام محمد قادیانی said مولوی مرزا غلام محمد قادیانی at the time جس نے اسلام کی اور قرآن کی اور محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی شان میں اسلام کے دشمنوں کا آریہ سماج ہندو اور نسائیوں کا جواب دیا ہے کوئی ہے تو لائے اور اس وقت جو حالات تھے وہی حالات تھے جو حدیثوں میں آئے ہیں کہ اسلام اٹھ جائے گا قرآن صرف پڑھنے کے لیے رہ جائے گا اور مسجدیں بھری ہوں گی یہ حدیث ہے میں آپ کو بتاتا ہوں حوالے دے کے اور اس وقت جو حالات تھے یہ مخاری کی حدیثیں ہیں آپ نے کہا کہ آپ نے کہا کہ آپ نے کہا کہ آریا سماج دیکھیں نا اس وقت جب بریٹش راج تھا ہندوستان میں برادر ایک دیت تائم دیو ور Christian missionaries right. were spread all over. Mm -hmm. Captain Douglas, Doi, and they were making all the Muslims, they were turning them into Christianity, they were turning them away from Islam. And uh, Mirza Ghulam Qadiani was the only Mujahid who fought against it. And the history, the non amdi scholars have written those. If, you had, if I knew all the, your, because you have the program, I have just been called. I would have brought all the right. evidence of right. Sir Sayyid Abad Khan and okay, so Iqbal and everybody. There. I'm going to stop you there because I think we're just going a bit way off now. Uh, well, just going back to one more claim now, and we're going to be very, very brief on this. Sure. He claimed in 1904, on the 2nd of November, that he is Krishna. And Krishna is known in Hinduism as one of their deities, yes. as one of the gods. So okay. did, did he claim to be a god of the Hindus? Right. Well, I'll tell you. And if you can please, please be very brief. I'll be very brief. We're going to go for a break, inshallah, no. shortly okay. as well. Okay. As Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Ramat al-Alameen, he didn't come only for Arab, as the pre previous prophets came for certain areas. And as we know, that Allah has been sending yeah. prophets in each area. You know, the difference yeah. is Krishna is a god. I know. Yeah? I okay. Krishna in okay. Hindi means uh, uh, their otar. Right. Otar means god. No, because he also followed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that so, his yeah. talim is to spread the Islam all over the world. So similarly, it was revealed to Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani that he is the Christian author. And to all your information, if you don't know, Hindus in Gita are also waiting for the Christian to come back again in all the religions. So basically, in the Buddhist, basically yes. he's the Messiah, the awaited Messiah he, of the Hindus. Yeah? He is Christian for the Hindus. Is, so he is the. So he's awaited Messiah for the Christian for the Hindus yes. as well. Thank you. He that's, is that's, the Jesus yep. for Christians and okay. Messiah for Muslims. Okay. Thank you. Okay, what we're going to do now, inshallah, we're going to take a short break, brothers and sisters, stay tuned, where we're discussing on the belief of our Ahmadi brethren. Uh, stay tuned, inshallah, we'll see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum.
Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the Good Morning with Ikra show. Uh, with me today, I have two very honorable guests. Um, Mr. Firstly, is uh, Mr. Anwar Mirza, who is of the Ahmadiyya movement. He's a follower of the Ahmadiyya movement. It, just to clarify again that he's not representing the movement. He's here independently. And also I have um, Akbar Ahmed Chaudhry, who was who is an ex Qadiani Ahmadi, and reverted to Islam in 2003. Uh, before we went to the break, gentlemen, we were talking about uh, Mirza Saab's claim that he is uh, Krishna. Okay. Um, Brother Akbar, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I would like to address that point and a couple of other points, if you, if you may. Uh, as far as I have you, you, dug, yeah, yeah sure. you have to be very brief yes, on these, please. Yeah. Into the research, I have not found any mention of Krishna returning because the Hindus consider Krishna as uh, a god uh, who is alive, and they don't consider him as a human being who has died or who is going to come back. So, the, in in the Hindu mythology, there is no mention whatsoever of Krishna returning at all. Um, as far as I, I've been able to find out, and I've done a thorough, thorough research. So again, it was one of those things that, to me, were just, uh, um, were just brought up as part of his um, uh, uh, claims. Okay. Ta ta talking about uh, Brian Amdia, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Iqbal, Mr. Amr Mr. Saab, have you read Brian Amdia? Yes. And how many Amdias do you think have read Brian Amdia? I think quite a lot of Ahmadis have read Brian Amdiya. Not only Ahmadis have read it, but it's been translated into different languages. So which languages have it been translated into? In, in English, and I also want to tell you yeah. that all the scholars <coughs> in Hindu yeah, at that time... Sorry, Jen, uh, just... just, it, it, just it was my turn to say something. I have to clarify this that, point. That uh, Brian Amdiya has not been translated into any language other than the original Urdu at this time. Even on the alislam.org website, there is no translation of that book which was considered the crowning achievement of Mirza Ghulam Sam. That book has uh, five volumes. First volume is uh, just an advertisement. Second volume is an introduction where he says, Mirza Sahib says he will put 300 uh, arguments in the, in the favor of Islam. Okay. Uh, chapter, uh, the fourth vo volume starts with the first argument then there is a big footnote that goes through two volumes, footnote number 11. And then on the fourth vo volume, the first argument is just uh, suspended halfway there. It's not even complete. Out of 300, uh, he did not even complete the rest of the 299 arguments. And uh, because people had paid for that uh, book, 50, 50 volumes he had promised, after 23 years, he published one more volume saying that uh, I promised 50, I delivered five, the difference is just a zero, you know. So this is how the theology evolves. I have yet to meet an Ahmadi who can tell me where are the 300 arguments, what they were, and what and how many of those are mentioned in Brahini Amdiya, and what was the argument, and have you read Brahini Amdiya? So again, this is, um, uh, this is exactly the point why I call it a cult. They believe in these things, and they say these things, while the reality is much different. So that book, that message that the so-called reformer brought in his biggest book, uh, his biggest work, has not been translated. It's never taught to any Ahmadis and has never been translated into any language. Right. What is the problem? Okay, wait, just something you said there that uh, Mirza Saab uh, said, I... one minute please, uh, Mirza Saab said that uh, he, he promised 50, vol uh, 50 volumes. 50 volumes and he only produced arguments. five. Yeah. And uh, he said the only difference is a zero. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mirza, is there any truth in this? Or uh, we're just going to stick with this now, please. Yes, eh? We're not going to go right. wayward I, or I, go I, to I, I previous points. I one point. First of all, uh, Brother Mehboob, he has come with the certain points which I did not know before coming to this program. I must clarify this. He came, I didn't know he was going to talk about Brahini and the other, because I don't have references on me of each book, but okay. he became prepared with his certain points, which I think is not fair, and I am ready to answer him all his questions, because I, I, it is just fair, uh, Brother Mehboob and Brother Akbar, it is just fair that if I come prepared with a list we, of questions we, we did which you are not even we, aware of, M Mr. and Mr. you come on a live television... Mr. Mizar, we explained... To be explained to you beforehand, we're going to speak on the character of Ghulam Ahmed Mirza Saab. Yeah, but this and is the character of Ghulam Ahmed Mirza Saab includes his works, okay. includes his books, includes the claims he made, yeah, and how he was in public as I well. See. Okay, so, no, so no. inshallah, this is the whole reason that we want to understand these points as right. well. No, can can I answer so if you, can, if you can just explain about why, why did he claim that the only difference between 50 and 5 is a zero? 
Okay. I, first of all, in those days, as far as I, if I, if I remember correctly, certain volumes were published, mm -hmm. and then there was obviously some money problem or somebody who... You know, means after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and after the uh, 13, you know, 1300 years, 1400 years, when there were clear prophecies that a time will come, uh, the, if I can remind you, one prophet, even uh, this uh, ayat came on, uh, was, uh, uh, what is the word, when it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Akhirin minhum is in Juma, in Summa Yal Hakubahim. And the Sahaba was sitting uh, near Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said that I will come again. That I will okay. come again. And what? the Sahaba were surprised and they said, what? Who are these people who will be the Akhreen, you know, the last last people among whom you will come? And Prophet Muhammad kept quiet. Then they asked again, he kept quiet because and the third time Prophet Muhammad always answered after you know Allah Ta'ala has given him the revelation where he and then he used to answer certain questions. And among these Sahabas there were Hazrat Salman Farsi sitting. He was the only one who was from Ajam, who was from the East, and the rest were all Arabs. So after this, he put his hand on the hand of, uh, uh, on the shoulder of uh, Hazrat Salman Farsi, anhu, and he said that even if the Iman went up to the Surayya, uh, the Hadith says, I, I don't want to say in Arabic in case I make mistakes, so I translate that, that even if the Iman was lifted up to the seventh heaven, Surayya star. Is Rajalun or Rajalun from these people or from these people, he will bring it back. So Salman Farsi was from the east right. and he was not among Arabs. So that means metaphorical language has been used in the Quran, in Hadith okay. many times. That is a reply to your. Similarly, he has used the word Maryam for himself, Adam. And uh, uh, one of his uh, poems, he says, Niz Ibrahim hu nasle hai meri beshmar, kabhi Adam, kabhi Isa, kabhi Musa, kabhi Ibrahim hu. Could, could you translate that for us? Yeah, uh, he says. Was he a poet as well? Yeah, he has written a poetry. He's in, a poet, okay. He uh, wasn't a poet. In his poetry, he says that my aim to write this poem is that somehow, the message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Quran and the Sachai reaches to people, otherwise I'm not a poem. He also says that. So he's not a poet but as such. He wrote poetry. But he, he wrote uh, po poetry okay. in Farsi in praise of Quran, in praise of okay. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the famous, I'm sure Mr. Akbar knows, was a Qasida in Arabic, in which he tells actually that he is nothing. Mm -hmm. He's nothing, and in one of his Urdu poems, I'll I'll have to say it in Urdu, Mehboob uh, Sahib, and then translate it. He says, Us noor par fida hoon, Wo peshwa hamara jisse hai noor sara, Naam uska hai Muhammad, Dilbar mera yehi. Sab paak hai payambar, Lekas khudai bartar, Sab paak hai payambar, Ek dousare se behtar, Lekas Khudai Bartar Khairul Bara Yehi Hai. This is in the Shan of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of his stanza says, Us Noor Par Fida Hoon, Uska Hi Mein Hua Hoon, Wo Hai, Mein Cheez Kya Hoon, Bas Faisla Yehi Hai. And I think that, that shows you his humbleness and his servant to his master. And according to the Quran's ayat, whoever is uh, obedient to Allah and his Rasul, there is a blessing of Nabiin, Sadiqin, Salihin, and Shohada, and these are the words of Quran. Thank these you. are not the words of Promised Messiah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mirza. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, Brother Akbar, anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I, I mean, ag ag again, um, uh, this is the confusion that I've always felt in the, in the, uh, in the Ahmadiyya, that they, they uh, equate uh, a person's internal feelings or whatever he thought with doctrine, and then uh, confuse the doctrine with religion and label that as the true as as the true as the true Islam. Okay. Uh, they call their religion the true the, the true Islam. So as you see, the brother uh, Mirza here did not address any of the of the uh, claims directly. He's, he uh, the three points that he used were number one, it is a metaphorical language. 
and number two there is a hadith and number three uh, the timeline that you presented so what i will do is i will go through these one by one if you have time you know uh, you have to be very brief on them sure. as you go through them. sure yeah. yeah yeah so uh the 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 first thing that uh comes to mind here is that uh the, the translation and the, when when uh, Ahmadis translate the Quran or they translate the Hadith, they introduce a little subtle meaning in there, which makes sense to Punjabi, Pakistanis, but doesn't make sense to the rest of the world. And uh, and this, this is why most of their fo uh, followers come from that persuasion. So just as an example here, the Hadith that was uh, quoted by Brother Mirza is Lokandal Imanu. لَوْكَانَ الْإِمَانُ عِنْدَ الثُرَيَّةِ لَنَالُهُ رَجُلٌ مِنْ هَوْلَى Now, the, con the word لَنَالُهُ means will reach, not will bring back. So, it, it was after I spent time in, in the Arab world and learnt uh, Arabic myself, was that I came to this conclusion that by twisting the, the, uh, the meaning of, uh, very slightly, mm -hmm. you, change the whole, uh, you change the whole concept and then you make it the foundation of your faith. Are, are you fluent in Arabic? I'm, I'm not fluent, okay, but, but I can read and I can speak and I can understand. So, uh, okay. what this meant is that mm -hmm. when the Arab people were saying, you know, this is... Uh, an Ajami, a Farsi person mm -hmm. sitting next to us, uh, the Holy Prophet uh, meant that uh, even if Iman, faith, were to be so far away as the Surya, the Pleiades, these people will reach it, meaning they have the capacity, although they are not Arabs, they have the capacity to reach it. But then that word has been mistranslated as to bring it back. So this is just one, one example just, just there. Just wait for the brother to finish, inshallah. Uh, we'll come back to then his coming to his uh, uh, claims, uh, Brother Mirza said that his claims were as God revealed to him. He was nothing by himself and as God. I have a serious problem with that because mm -hmm. although I may not doubt his, what was inside his heart, his love for his family, his love for Allah or whatever, I'm not there to judge him. But what I can judge Mirza Qadiani on, I can judge him based on what he did and what he claimed. So in, in 1880, going with your timeline, in 1880 he wrote the Brahim Ahmadiyya, in which he, he believed Jesus to be uh, um, still uh, not dead, uh, Hazrat Isa al-Islam. Yeah. And in 1880 or 1881, uh, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan wrote a commentary of the Holy Quran, in which he raised, according to him, that Jesus had died. In 1885, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed claimed to be Mujaddid, reformer, although, you, uh, to be honest, you don't claim to be Mujaddid. You do something, and then people say you are the reformer. But he had a habit of making a claim before he would do anything. So, and then he held that belief, although he had claimed to be Mujaddid in <coughs> 1885, he held that belief until 1890 or 1891, when he finally said, oh, God has revealed to me that uh, Jesus has died. So just as an, as an example, it, it shows you. So these timelines, like you said, mm -hmm. don't make sense. They go from one claim to another, to another, to another, and each claim becomes uh, uh, as, uh, as uh, pre pre preposterous as the one before. So you see a gradual uh, thing in there. When we read history, we look at, uh, we look at saints or we look at prophets in, uh, in, in, in the history of various religions, we see that when God appoints, me, appoints them, they stand up and say, you know, this is why God appointed me and this is what I'm, I'm here to do. Yep. And here we see a gradual change and a lot of inconsistency in, in the days. So having been appointed a reformer, God now, Billah did not tell him that Isa is is uh, dead or alive, mm -hmm. and then six years down the road, while Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan's commentary had been there for 11 years, then he finally changes his uh, belief. So I have a serious problem with how he presented it. Okay. Um, what were his internal thoughts or his internal beliefs? I'm not there to judge him. God is there, and He will judge all of us. You know. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Anything you'd like to? Uh, just, brief, just very briefly, because yeah, we've got some yeah, well, more points you want to get. Right, uh, one or inshallah. two points. First of all, you know, I don't know how, uh, I'm not an Arabic professor, mm -hmm. but how you translate this, that uh, all, the, all the pious people in the last 12, 1300 years, their books are there, they have translated the Hadith in the same meaning as I have stated. Uh, listen, I have I have the book 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 here with me. If you want, you are more familiar than Arabic. 
or this book, I will show it to you. Second thing is, you said that he eventually, every Prophet, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came back from Gare Sawar, Gare Hira, he put blanket around his and the Khatija was there to tell him he was trembling. So when Allah talks to some money problem or somebody, who, or maybe, you know, the press problem because it was sent to Amritsar, for some reason, uh, because I'm not sure on this, I think I better not comment, and I don't understand okay. this point of 50 and 0. All I know is that all the volumes are there, and at that time, at that time, and I will can send you the references, that all the ulamas of that time, they said that Brahini Andia is written in such a way that nobody can actually answer uh, against Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Quran, because yeah. in that argument, and there's another book, Islamia Sulki Philosophy, the philosophy of Islam. Why don't you mention that? And there are 85 other books which he has written, not only for his claim, but in favor of to proving that Islam is the only religion and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best and Akmal Tareen and nobody is above him. Okay. And also in the, in, the, in, the, in the same light, he has said that all I have come, whatever my claim is, to revive everything which Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Sallam. everything which... But he also, claimed, he also yes. claimed prophethood, yeah? He, claimed he, he did claim prophethood. Yes, Zili, yes. Zili Nabi, that okay. means... That he, means he has no okay, just new one, sharia. Okay, okay, not new sharia, but no. he did claim to uh, be a prophet who was to confirm of previous. Yeah, he is this said what it that is? he is the same same prophet who's who has been prophesied okay. to come in the later days. Okay, in the name of uh, uh, Bani Israel. Right. Okay. Isai just ibn Maryam, just, and just can, on that. I okay, so we confirm that. that you believe he is a prophet. Yes. Okay. Now on that point. Uh, about the books, the a, books a issue, prophet, the books issue. Without new sharia. Okay, without new sharia. Fine, that's fine. We accept that. Yeah. On the point of the books, that he said that I would produce 50 volumes, he produced five. Okay, let's take the dot out. Do you know about this? That he, he, he said I'll produce 50, but he only produced five. Yeah, he made a promise to the people that this is what I will do. Has there been, do prophets break their promises? Right, now one thing, I, uh, I'm not sure about this, his argument that he promised that he will make 50 volumes because in those days, you know, I, I, as far as I understand, okay. uh, I, that he, he used to write or his people, his friends or his subordinates used to write and then it was sent to publish to Amritsar or Batala or some other place and then the copies were coming back. But as I have just said, on this very point, it's not important that whether it was 50 volumes or he promised 25 volumes. You can start writing a book, right? You can start, when Quran was revealed, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not know it's going to be 30 chapters, did he? He didn't. As Allah revealed him, Allah guided him. But, but he didn't promise the people that this is how many Yeah, but I, do, I don't know. I, as I said, Mr. Akbar says that. I will, I will go and read it and I will definitely get Inshallah. in touch with him because, as I've said, what I don't know, I don't want to, be, no I don't want to claim. So what, what because I'm not yeah, Alameda no and I said that no at the last program. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Jarkallah. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Brother Akbar, if you want to... Anything you want to add to that, but very, very briefly, yeah, because I, I want to move I, on as well. I, I will just take 10 seconds of your, uh, yeah. of, of your time here. Uh, there are books in Arabic that he wrote, which mm -hmm. have not been published in Arabic. Mm -hmm. There are books in Persian that he wrote, which have not been published in Persian. So, and these books are called spiritual treasure by the Ahmadiyya, that the, he was the Mahdi who brought spiritual treasure. That treasure is being kept hidden. Are the Ahmadiyya too embarrassed to show it? Why are they not translated? Why are they not searchable? Why are they not uh, translated into multiple languages and people uh, of the world and, and, and the problems that the world is, is facing uh, are not there. So that's all I, I've got to add okay. to it. Yeah. Right, so thank you. We're going to just leave that at that. When I move on, I just want to ask... 10 we, seconds. We're just going to yeah. leave that. Yeah, if, ten, uh, yeah, 10 seconds, very ten short, seconds. please. Yeah? He just said... He has, uh, he has uh, written books in Arabic, they have not been translated in Arabic. And he said he's written books in uh, uh, Farsi, they have not been translated in Farsi. I don't understand what do you mean. They have not been, uh, uh, if he has written a book in yep. Arabic, Hamamatul Bushra, it's right, it is, whole book is in Arabic, and you okay. say it's not translated into Arabic, I don't understand okay, what Okay, let's just leave mean. that, no problem, leave that there. Uh, but Akbar, I just want to ask you, uh, you lived most of your life as a, a follower of the Ahmadi Jamaat? Am I correct? Yep. Yeah. You agreed with the claims of Ahmed Mirza Saab. Yeah. He provided you with the evidence. Yeah. The, through revelations, Quran and Hadith. Then why do you still deny? Why are you against 
the Ahmadiyya movement? Uh, to, to correct your question a little bit, I'm okay. not against anybody. Okay. Um, many people of my family, mm -hmm. almost all of my family is still, is still Ahmadi. I, 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 I regard them like my brothers and, and, and sisters. My problem is only with the leadership of the Ahmadiyya who have corrupted this organization into a cult and they are they have either hidden or uh, they, 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 there is no consistency in those arguments so just like brother uh, uh, Anwar was saying a short while ago that all the scholars agreed on on uh, on on Mirza Saab's books whenever Ahmadiyya used the word all they never stand behind it the, there is no there is no scholarly debate allowed within the Ahmadiyya and they never hold any scholarly debate with any other person and what happens is uh, all the scholars shunned shunned Mirza Ghulam during his time as a person who was off his rocker, you know. Uh, and But when you talk to Ahmadi, they will say all. And when you ask them for a reference, they will bring you one or two. And the leading people at that time, the leading Muslim scholars of that time, uh, they will not uh, mention the names. So yes, I can bring you a list of names from somewhere, but that doesn't mean anything. Then I found out that um, uh, a lot of arguments and these references from old scholars' books like uh, Mohyuddin Ibn Arabi and uh, other scholars are false. They are faked. They are faked or the, or the translations are faked. Mm -hmm. So I dug through these one by one and I've held debates with people online for the last seven years I've been uh, online and I've asked anybody to come. So most of what uh, it, it, is, it is based on twists and, and uh, turns and then you uh, so I was not prepared to base my whole dean and my whole foundation of my existence on such uh, sand, you know, so, so, such an unstable foundation. Uh, so th this was primarily the, the, uh, the reason. And when I took this up with the people, the, uh, the leaders in the community, I was shunned. They, they asked me to come and present my, uh, my points. And when I, I, I volunteered to present them, they said, sorry, it's too late, you know. So uh, th this was the, dr the driving force behind uh, uh, the reason that I, I, I left Ahmadiyya. And when I found Islam and I joined Islam, I have been um, very blessed that there are brothers in Islam who hold different views, who discuss, publish books about Islam, about Islamic history. What have the Ahmadiyya done for Islamic history? What has the Ahmadiyya done for Islamic theology? They say we are the real Islam. What have they actually delivered in terms of, uh, of uh, scholarly content or in, form, in forms of engagement? Right. Yeah. So yeah, if you just want to quickly finish, yeah. then... Yeah. So what I saw things. is that inside that cult, you are conditioned to consider all Muslims as ogres, as people who are scary. They don't do anything for Islam. They, don't do they just fight and kill each other, and they are such scary people. And when I came to find Muslims are completely, completely different. They talk like we are talking right now. They discuss, they evaluate, and uh, they, yes, Islam is under a lot of pressure right now. But uh, what is happening in the, in, the, in the Muslim world is a thousand, a million times more than what Ahmadiyya is doing despite all their finances and despite all their organization so-called. So I said, you know what, this is, this is completely shady. It's like Scientology, like Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, like any of those other cults in Christianity. It's, it's something like that. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mirza, anything you'd like to add? Uh, I just don't know which of his point to take. First of all... Just pick, yeah. pick two points. Yeah, one or two points. Yeah. Uh, first of all, you said that uh, Islam came 1400 years ago, yes? And still, even today, in the 21st century, it's the 15th, uh, 15th Hijri, has, has the whole world accepted Islam? Not yet. We are still struggling, you and me, to bring them in the fold of uh, Islam. So don't, uh, you know, uh, all these, uh, your uh, things which you have just said, Promised Messiah, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Afghadiyan, is only about just over 100 years old. Tell me, give me an example of any prophet or any mazhab in the history of religion that within 100 years or 200 years, you know, they had conquered the whole world. Islam. No, Islam did not. You're wrong because it's on the up to 7th or 8th century, they only came up to Spain. I know, I have studied the history of Islam as well because basically, it is the Islam which is the real religion. I agree with this terminology. 
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last prophet, is the seal of prophet. Quran is the last book, and his Sharia is the last last Sharia. And, Prof, uh, and Mirza Ghulam Muhammad of Qadian never claimed that he's a Shari Nabi. And as, uh, as I said, you know, you, you said that we say all, you know, when you talk generally, you generalize people. Most of, uh, if I had known uh, uh, Brother Akbar with all these questions before, and I think it should have been given to me, you know, the opportunity, or at least, because as I said, I'm not a thorough scholar. He became prepared with his questions. I we, did we, not. We, nobody's come. Okay. The only person who's come with Second questions is myself. Sir, okay. okay. Nobody's been shown. In, uh, uh, nothing's uh, been discussed right. beforehand. One point okay. of his, I, I want to tell you. You know, you keep saying Scientology and Jehovah's Witness, etc., etc. Do you uh, do you know what they claim Jehovah's Witness, for instance? Tell me, what is the difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament and Jehovah's? If you know about the religion of uh, Christians. Can you point out and I'll answer it? I think uh, at One the moment thing. we're simply moving backwards. Just, to, okay, claim, to, move just on. to claim something, yeah. to use just the quickly. terminology yeah. and blame others. I have no right to blame any other sect unless I have studied it. Mm -hmm. And I know just for the propaganda's sake, people tell lies. People still don't believe in Allah. People tell lies about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows Billah yeah. 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 they, they say certain surahs are mansukh in Quran. So what do you want me to do? Just, just believe them? What you said no. is you've got no right to judge any sect if you haven't studied on it. If yeah? you haven't studied, you haven't studied it, it and on you it. don't okay. know the reality. And you don't know the reality. This is it. Have you studied Ahmadiyya, brother? Yes. Uh, okay. I and how, how long did you study for? Uh, I have studied all my life. I've read all of Mr. Sahib's books and the can books you, Can you be successes. precise? Can you give me how many, roughly how many years you, li you lived as a... Uh, from age age of uh, 12 yeah. onwards, I think I have been constantly studying each and every book that I could lay my hands on okay. till the age of about 35 okay. when I left the Ahmadiyya. So uh, I, I have t taken it upon myself to read everything. I, di I, I did not come prepared with any answers. All I am saying is from my memory. And uh, I have lived among those people and I have been there and I have studied um, them uh, in, 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 in much great depth. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, I mean, I don't know how to answer brother's uh, question here. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. If, um, uh, you know, for instance, have you studied his book, uh, Masih Hindustan May? Yes. Yes? Yeah. And you believed in that at that time? Okay, look, we're, sorry, gentlemen, we're going to move on now. Uh, another question I'll bring up Ji. is the regarding the role of um, uh, sisters within the organization. Sisters? Uh, sisters. The women. Women, I see. The women. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so our, our sisters. Yeah, yeah. Our sisters G. in humanity. Uh, Ahmadiyya's, Ahmadiyya brethren claim to be very modern and very progressive. Not modern, in, uh, uh, in the middle. But very progressive people. Not so, really. <laughs> no? Okay. So these are the claims that I've heard anyway. Uh, that, uh, uh, depends that they claim to be very progressive people. Progressive. Okay, <laughs> you're moving very fast ahead and uh, very understanding with people in that sense. What is the ro uh, role of women in your organization? In, in our organization? What are the rights okay. within the movement? Uh, of the okay. Ahmadiyya? As for the rights which are given to the women by our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, same rights are given to Ahmadi women, and I think same rights right should be given to whether they are Ahmadis or non Ahmadis, because Allah has laid out rules, Allah has said clearly in Quran the rights of women, what their duties are, and what our men's duties are. So as far that side is concerned, same rights are given in the family, in the society, and they should be given. What is given in, uh, as far, we have an organization called uh, Lajna Imaullah and Nasirat. Nasirat are the girls up to the age of 12. And after the age of 12, they are known as Lajana. And why are you writing this? You are being an MD, you should have known all this, as you claim to be. And uh, in the men's section, the boys up to the age of 14 are called Atfal. After, uh, from the 14 to 40 years of age, uh, Brother Mehboob, they are called Khuddam, the servants. Right. And after Khuddam, after 40 years of age, they are called Ansar. These are names given to the organization. Right. Now, the rights of the women, mm -hmm. uh, any particular, then I can tell you what I know. What, what role did they actually play within the organization? Within what, the organization. Uh, uh, do they have any roles within yeah. like offices, within... Um, are they allowed to... Do, do you vote for your uh, khalif? 
Do you? Do you, do you vote for your leader? Do you choose? Uh, no? no, there is there is a process. Uh, okay. There's a process of when one uh, you see. Can can I briefly tell you? Very very briefly. Or just just tell us on, yes. on what, what the sisters what they do to help. We, we have a uh, we have a system that one Khalifa mm -hmm. passed away. Now we have Azat Mirza Masrur Ahmad. Right. He is the fifth Khalifa. Okay. And he's the grandson of the actual founder of Prophet. Uh, sorry. Uh, Mirza Ghulam of Qadian, whom we call Hazrat Musi Maud alayhi salam. Right. When one Khalifa passes away, leaves us, then there's a committee and there are certain rules and regulations within the committee. And uh, as we, as you know, and I'm sure he knows, Khilafat Allah, Mirhaj al Nabuwa. So Allah, we don't believe that I, you, and we choose Khalifa. Allah chooses the Khalifa and he puts in people's heart who is the right person. And that person, uh, Allah, Allah helps him and he guides him and he makes him our leader and it is our duty. And it's my duty and I'm sure he knows that. I will follow whatever my Khalifa says up to, up to my limits, whatever I can. Right. And as uh, so the women's role is concerned, women's role is the same, uh, okay. Brother Mabub, as in each society. They right. work, they worship, mm -hmm. they form their duties uh, for, for, if they're given duty, for instance, to help uh, Jamaat uh, in some writing or uh, organize the women's uh, games, etc., teach them Qur'an Park, like your channel does. So all the similar things. Yeah. If any particular yeah. thing you want to ask me, then I'll answer you. Okay. No, just in general, just wanted to yeah, know general, what role. Uh, generally said. Anything you'd like to Yeah, add? Uh, this is something uh, that I'm uh, interested in talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, Ahmadiyya claim to be progressive, and they, and they claim to be reformed. And uh, part of their reforms concern j jihad, the concept of jihad, and women. Uh, the rights of women in Islam. Oh, no. Ahmadiyya are not, Ahmadiyya women are not allowed to be a president. They're not allowed to be office holders. Yes, like Brother uh, uh, Anwar said, they have their auxiliary organization, like the youth, like the boys, the girls, mm -hmm. there is a women's organization, but that is not part of the general Jamaat hierarchy. They're not, uh, can, cannot be a member of their shura. They cannot be elected to a member of the shura. They cannot be on that committee which elects the Khalifa. Right. And every Khalifa uh, so far has said that the proper Ahmadi woman should wear the burqa from head to toe. Okay. And they, they, they sometimes they get very angry. Mirza Tahir and Mirza Nasir at least used to get very angry. I, I don't know about Mirza Masur. I have not been uh, in the Ahmadiyya. Uh, they used to get very angry when women would not wear the head to toe burqa. Now, uh, compared to that, look at ISNA. ISNA is a conservative, orthodox organization in North America for Muslims, for, right. Sunni, mus, uh, for general uh, Muslims, the biggest organization. And its chairperson is Dr. Ingrid, I forget her last name, uh, who, is, uh, the, who was elected by the general body of the Muslims in North America as, um, as, uh, as uh, their chairperson, you know? So when you see this, you, you can see where the Muslims are so far ahead and progressive and in tune with today's requ requirements than th those who claim to be progressive. Then it comes to the question of jihad. They will say... Uh, let's, let's, let's not talk about jihad, we're talking about the uh, women here. Sure, okay. yeah, yeah, come to that after. About the women thing? Yeah, and then we're going to move on. Yes, yeah. very briefly. Uh, as you know, and you, you, you have admitted that you know, you've been an MD, you are familiar with the organization of Lajna Maula, etc. Rasul Akram has also gave, gave, yeah. the, you know, gave us instructions. So basically, it goes back to Rasul Pak's instructions and the Quran, where to keep the women, the rights of women, etc. You know what has happened in the progressive society where women are mixed up in churches and clubs, etc., etc., when we all know the result. And the old woman is suffering from that disease. So what uh, we have president in Lajna Maula organization, we have Sadr, we have the Naib Secretary, etc., etc., within their eyes. Now you want us like the, like the church to bring in uh, the priesthood in women, Allah has made them biologically different, Allah has given them the responsibility of bearing children, their, their biological system is different, Allah has given... And in Quran, Allah has showed us the power. So within that circle, we are progressive. Our women are liars, teachers, barristers, doctors, scientists. And you know Professor Abdus Salam, who got the Nobel Prize. You know Chaudhry Muhammad Zafullah Khan. And uh, even in the, during the time of uh, Nawaz Sharif, the one or two scientists were right. army scientists. And in the army, General Ali and General Akhtar, you see, we are contributing in the progressive society with all the other Muslims. Right, so I'm going to have to stop you there. We're going to go for a short break. Uh, brothers and sisters, stay tuned. Uh, inshallah, we're just going to go for a short, short break and we'll see you after the break, inshallah.
ilaha illallah Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters welcome back uh, today we're talking about the um, uh, Ahmadiyya movement uh, with me today I have uh, Mr. Anwar Mirza who is a member of the Ahmadiyya movement and also uh, brother Akbar Ahmed Chaudhry who is a uh, in 2003 uh, brothers I'd like to ask a, Mr. Mirza I'd like to ask you a question yes. regarding why should Muslims accept Mirza, Mirza Saab as their messiah and revert to Ahmadiyya? Because it's not Anwar who says that. Okay. It's not anybody else who says that. Because Rasulullah Akram Sallallahu has said that and there are ahadith, there are his uh, instructions in the books that when Isa ibn Maryam Kanazul, when the promised Messiah comes and he will come later in the later days as I've s stated from Surah Juma, go and give him my salam this is in hadith and I've got the book here if you don't agree then I can show it to you it's not my hadith it's the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam go and uski bat karo go and believe him and give him my salam so obviously Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew much more than anybody else because Allah 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 instructed him and he knew because he is not only for 1400 years his teaching is forever and forever till the day of Qiyamah that is I believe and if we understand his teaching and in the hadith, not according to differences between us, but with a fair mind and understand the actual what he's trying to convey us, I am sure that a lot of Muslims, and believe me, you know all these Ahmadis who are in millions now, they were Christians, they were Hindus, they were right, Muslims. Okay. Right. And they have converted into, uh, into Ahmadiyyat. Amdiyat is the basic Islam, the true Islam which Prophet Muhammad So what's, what's, what's the main reason? We, we need to just give us a main reason that why uh, Muslims should accept Mirza Saab as their Messiah yeah, and revert to Ahmadiyya. For the same reason, because he has come to revive the Islam. You know, like okay. Iqbal said, Tumara Tamaddan hai or like Yehud, you know, he says that we Islam, now in Islam, look at Islam, look at Muslims, mm. what is the condition, the whole world knows. So somebody has to come right. and take them back to the feet of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and turn them so, into... So somebody has to come, but according to Ahmed, Ahmed oh, he has somebody come. Has, has, he's come and he's gone. No, he he's has... Come, he's come he, and he's gone, yes? No, he's, he, he's passed everybody away. Everybody has to come to this earth and has Everybody to has to come to this earth, okay. But he's come and he's gone. Uh, is this yeah. correct? Uh, yes, he is. This correct? Okay, thank you. Uh, Akbar, uh, Brother Akbar, sorry, uh, on the claims of uh, m accepting Mirza Saab as the Messiah, is this correct? That are his valid claim, uh, the, sorry, his claims, are they valid? Should Muslims accept these claims? There are three aspects to it. Um, one, one aspect is that uh, he is called a reformer. Right. Let's take that up first. Uh, as a reformer, what did he come with? I have, I have, it's been 20 years, I've been asking this from many, many people, what in a nutshell are the new or the reforms that Mirza Saab brought? And I get three answers. He declared that Arabic was the mother of all languages. That is against scientific fact. He declared that uh, Jesus Christ, uh, that Isa al Islam died in uh, Kashmir, which is against uh, historical fact. Okay. And then he said, uh, uh, um, uh, Isa al Islam did um, not die on the cross, you know. And or, or died afterwards, which, which again is, you know, so apart from these, in 20 years, I have not been able to find anything, any single thing that Mirza Saab supposedly uh, reformed. Even the last reform was uh, predated by Sad Sayyid Ahmed and other people, not reform, in his opinion. Then if we consider him to be a prophet, he still falls short. I mean, the, the, there is nothing that a prophet does that he did, which is again bring a new message. So, did he reform an existing message or did he bring a new message? He fails on that count and he fails on the other count. Now, let's leave this aside and say, okay, somebody was promised to come and he came. Then, in that case, we need to find out whether he, his, his character and his, um, what he did was in line with what we generally expect from a saint or some, somebody else. And there his character falls far, far short of uh, being, uh, being um, uh, a saint or being even a leader or being even a decent human being in some, in some cases, not in all, all cases. Then regarding the numbers of the ah Ahmadiyya, the Ahmadiyya are still 95% Punjabi based from that, all the families that are there. They sometimes say we are 200 million, sometimes 
sometimes 1 million, sometimes 5 million. The real number is around between 1.5 and 2 million. They will exaggerate all up and down. And uh, some of them are in Africa, and the rest are all Punjabi-based or Punjabi or um, Pakistani, Indian-based and people from the same family. If you go to any Jalsa, they have a Jalsa or whatever, you see the same faces, the same people over and over again. So as he implied, the people are joining this, uh, um, the, the Ahmadiyya, this is not the case uh, anyway. So I, as a Muslim, find no reason whatsoever as a reformer mm -hmm. or as a prophet or just as a person of immense moral character that I can look up to as a role model. Uh, I don't find right. any of the three. You know? Okay, yeah. so just staying with yourself now. Can um, we answer, answer questions, basic we, questions? We, we want to move on now. We've been, we've been sticking... If you can ask for five seconds, I'm only going to give you five seconds and I have to time you as well. Okay, because, because, uh, you know, no. they're very basic questions which he has raised. says that uh, uh, Jesus did not die on the cross and he's buried in Kashmir. These are very important questions, and I think it is just right. These are, these are extremely answer. important questions, and inshallah, what we're going to do is, inshallah, we'll do another show on this where we can go a bit further. The, a, so these, these, these are just, just the basics. Just one minute, the basis. I can answer them within one minute. Thirty seconds, seconds on each question. I'm going to give you thirty. No, no. I'm going to give you thirty seconds. And just to, to quickly, cover this both. just to quickly, okay. Be very brief, please. In yeah. Quran, it's Allah Taala says, "Wama katalu wa wama salabu." That means he was uh, he did not die on the cross. The Quran says, Mr. Saab doesn't say that, okay? Second thing, why he's buried in Kashmir? The research, he has said, it is... If you study the history of Israelite, the ten tribes, for whom Jesus came, this is history, uh, this is not right. something to do with that. All these Kashmiris, Afghanistanis are the races of ancient Israeli right. tribes, Bani Israel. I think and we've got, we're, 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 going, no, we're going to leave this as it is now, okay, because we're going a bit wayward. Yep. Uh, the, the question was on the character of Mirza Saab, okay. So, uh, uh, moving on, inshallah. Uh, mm -hmm. What I want to ask now is, um, uh, Brother Akbar, during your time as when you believed in Ahmadiyya, yeah, uh, did you ever, were you allowed to pray in the masjids along with mu Muslims? Did you ever go to, I'm not talking about Ahmadiyya mosques, yeah, um, Ahmadiyya mosques, I'm talking about other mosques, masjids. Yes, we this is a, a very interesting question. Within that cult, we, we are in, discouraged from uh, uh, mingling with Muslims completely. Uh, and it, it was scary for me. I, was, I, I grew up within this organization. It was very, very scary for me to go into a Muslim mosque. The first time I went to a Muslim mosque when I was driving between uh, Abu Dhabi and Al Ain in UAE, and uh, right in there, there was a call for Juma, and I said to myself, you know what, this is a mosque, these are people, let me go in there. I was scared, what would they do? Will they find out I'm a Muslim? Will they, uh, will they see if I hold my hands like this, or if I hold my hands like this? But it turned out that Muslims are very di diverse, unlike the Ahmadiyya, who are a very uniform society that, you know, are very uh, homogeneous. Muslims are very diverse, nobody had an issue with that. Now, this goes back to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, who said that uh, you should not pray behind other Muslims, you should not pray the funerals of other Muslims, uh, and you should not um, uh, intermarry. There was some restriction on intermarriage. You can marry their daughters, but you cannot have your daughters marry Muslims and so on. Right. So he created this right from the beginning. And yep. if you go back to Dr. Lifton's criteria of what is a cult, this is the primary requirement yeah. of a cult. Yeah. We'll yeah. come to the cult after. Sure. Yeah. I just want to stay on the about, the, about the masjid. Yeah. Are you, were you allowed to pray no, within no, the masjid? No, you never, weren't allowed to pray? Never, okay. never. It, it, was strongly, it was strongly discouraged. And you yeah. said you prayed at the time, you in yeah, Abu the, Dhabi? The, the, the first time I went to a Muslim mosque. How yes. did you feel at the time? I, I, was, I felt very scared, but the Imam got up. He spent five, ten minutes talking about zakah and talking about uh, kindness to human beings. Mm -hmm. And he quoted from the Quran. Everybody prayed. Some people were praying with their hands like this. Some were praying with their hands like this. It, it, it. To me, that uh, uh, that that was a big uh, revelation that Muslims are these tolerant uh, people who are who who are not out there to look at other people's faults and to kick them out or you know, mm -hmm. which, which was the concept I had. And this is a shared by Brother Shahid. And this is shared by many other people that I've come to, is that the first time they interact with Muslims after they leave, or while they're considering to leaving, they are absolutely scared. So I have, um, Muslims will sometimes avoid, sorry, uh, Ahmadis will sometimes avoid praying. Even if there is a Juma going on, they will make some excuse and go out of the office for some, for some reason. And their second uh, Khalifa, Mirza Bashiruddin, went for Hajj. And then he wrote in the book, I prayed, but then I came back and prayed myself. 
So even at during Hajj, they, they try not to pray behind the the the, the Imam who is there. All Muslims from all sects like do. But so, but sometimes when they do pray behind him, they follow the example of their uh, second Khalifa and say, "I went back into my room and I prayed myself." So th this is this creates the division uh, between the Ummah. This is why they, our our brothers and sisters who are Ahmadis, our our. Our innocent brothers and sisters think of the Muslim world as their enemy, whereas this is not correct. This is not uh, correct. Mm -hmm. So, whereas this is not correct. This is not uh, correct. Mm -hmm. So, th th this, okay. this is what leads to it. No. Yeah. Mr. Mizar, uh, no, we don't think uh, we don't think they're enemies. First of all, you know, Imamakum minkum. Now you tell me, you believe that Jesus will come? I want no, 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 Mr. Mizar. We, we, we're yes. going backwards, yeah. I'm no, we, I'm we, going we are going back. We just uh, start from the masjid. I, I have you, have you prayed in the masjid alongside other Muslims? Uh, so the other Muslims. Yes. Uh, I have prayed uh, in a non ahmadi mosque in Pakistan okay. when it was time for prayers. Okay. Uh, while traveling, there was if I found a mosque, I prayed there. But in, in the jamaah, in the congregation, in the congregation, con congregation because, prayer, no, be behind you, behind the imam. No, when you have your own mosque, when you have your own Ahmadi imam, your own Ahmadi mosque, why should I go specially to go and pray under another imam? Tell me. So if you if just say your example, just an example. If you were traveling, Ji. okay, and you went to a different city where there's no Ahmadi mosques okay. available, Ji. and there's a masjid there. And it's time, I don't say, it's Jummah. Right. Okay. Are you allowed to go and pray behind the Imam? Are you allowed to pray Jummah, pray behind the Imam? E? If, a non Ahmadi? Yeah. yeah. If he's a non Ahmadi, yeah. then obviously because Imam means what he believes, you are following him. Listen, that is why, Alhamdulillah, Surah Fata is being told that when Imam recites Surah Fata, every Muqtadi who is in the Namaz, in the Jummah, must recite that. Why? Because what Imam says, you follow him. That is why what Imam means. So when you are following, if I'm an Amdi and if I'm following an Imam who does not believe, mm -hmm. who believes that uh, Nausbillah Mirza Ghulam Ahmad was a Kafir or he believes I am a Kafir or something, mm -hmm. that means I am following him, yeah. what he believes. That is the reason why, yeah. why yeah. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you study the history of Islam, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, he allowed the Yehudis to come to their mosque and yeah. pray. There are so many different. But so no, 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 non Ahmadis are allowed to come to your mosque and pray, yeah? Yes. Okay. And they but, do come. But you're not allowed to pray behind uh, uh, a non Ahmadi because uh, you say that non Ahmadis you claim, non Ahmadis say that you're non, that you're non Muslim, yes. that you're Kafir, as you said. And that was the example which your brother Just on that, just on that, yes, just on that. Yes. Do the, non, do the Ahmadis call the non Ahmadis Kafirs as well? Because first, now that is another point, this is what I was coming to, when you, you know the, when you, what you believe that Jesus will come, in, you know, from Asman, mm -hmm. and he will revive Islam, and he will cut Khinzir, and all those mm -hmm. things, yep. you believe that, isn't it? Alhamdulillah. Now when, suppose if I live to that time, it's 2000 years, we're still waiting for him to come. Now when I would, uh, when I will not believe in that Jesus, what would you call me? Tell me. What? So, you understand mm -hmm. my point? When you were, use the word kafir or you believe non-believer, whatever, you tell me when your Jesus, as you said now, that no, you are non-MD, when Hazrat Isa Islam will come from sky, you know, which I don't believe he will come, he's never gone there. It's, you know, it's unnatural, it oh, doesn't you, say in Quran. You yes. believe he, okay, he, you know, he wasn't raised. I, I can prove okay, if you, you give me yeah, time. Okay, no problem, no. we'll leave that at that. Yeah. Yes, the, 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 this is a kind of exceptionalism mm -hmm. because the whole of Ahmadiyya theology, as I'm fond of saying, is based in that uh, little crack between, uh, between Arabic and Urdu. Mm -hmm. So this concept of Imam, Imam in Urdu means some, some, somebody who you follow your belief with. Imam for prayer, I can be wandering down a street in the middle of nowhere and there are five Muslims there praying. I don't need to know the belief of that person. He can be any persuasion, any madhab uh, within Islam. He, he can be, he can be anybody. I, I just stop. I, I stop. Mr. Mirza, you're going to have to yes. let him talk. He didn't interrupt you. Sure. Yes, please. Sorry. I just park my car. I stop. I do wudu. I pray. I leave. I never stop to ask him what his question or whether he calls me kafir or I call him kafir. It's all exceptionalism. And this is the foundation of the problems uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Ahmadiyya is now having with its own. Yes, it manages to keep the people within the cult because they are very scared, they are, they are leadership is always scared that if they interact with Muslims more, then all these, uh, these fears that have been created in the minds of the followers will not be there, uh, be there anymore. Okay, right.
Uh, <laughs> well, one, just one second. Uh, just yeah. sorry, just going to move yeah. on. Just some of the other things that uh, Ghulam Ahmed Mirza Sahib said. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he said, and I quote, Gayum ul alamin. Gayum is one of the attributes of Allah SWT. Yeah? Okay. It's such huge body. Gayum. Yeah. Who has uncountable hands and feet, and every limb is in such abundance that it cannot be counted. Mm -hmm. And, at, and has endless width and length and like a leopard. This huge body also has wires which is extending to all corners of the earth. So basically Mirza Sahib is saying that uh, uh, Allah SWT is like a leopard and he has uncountable hands and feet. What do you say to that? Uh, again, uh, again, it is, you know, these are trivial things taken out of the context. When you are giving example, when you are giving example, when you are trying to explain to people, you, you have to give them the example what is in front of them, what they see. They see leopard, they see is powerful, they see fish, sometimes you see tree, the shadow. So when you are explaining to people who are not acquainted with the metaphorical language of Quran or Hadith, then you have to use this terminology, and this terminology right. has been used but, but he's, by he's, Prophet Muhammad he's, as well. He's saying on the condition of Allah SWT. So he's comparing, so in this sense, he's comparing Allah SWT to his creation. Is this what we can do no, that no, when, no. when we, to somebody who doesn't know Allah, who Allah SWT is, can we compare him to his creation to make them understand that this is what he's like? But this is one, one, one way. I don't know from which context it's been taken out. Kayum, kay, you know what Kayum means. Okay. Kayum means thumbnail, the one, uh, how do you pronounce it in English, maybe uh, Mr. Akbar, you can help me out. What yeah, is sure. thumbnail? Uh, yeah, if you want. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and the second thing I want, just right. one minute, I want to come back to, you know, when you say that you are traveling and you want to go uh, the pray. We're, we're moving on now, Ms. Yeah. Mr. sorry, that's done, that's done. We, we seem to be moving backwards at the moment. We're going to try and yeah. progress, inshallah. You see, his questions come see. first and then I have to go back to onto them. But uh, I'll ask you, if you give you like me the opportunity to ask him questions, then obviously he will be in the same situation. I'll ask him. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There, this, this kind of uh, metaphorical la language is sometimes used by Sufis and other, uh, other people. Mm -hmm. But the way Mr. Saab used it is, is extraordinary. He, he, right. he broke every boundary that, that, that was out there. And it is, uh, Ahmadiyya theology is a mixture of Sufism, some concept from Sufism, like Zilli, Buruzi, some concept from Wahhabism, some concept from this, some uh, Shia uh, uh, concepts. It's, it's a mixture that doesn't all gel to, uh, to, to, together as a, a theology. And now Ahmadi's hands are tied. They cannot go back and uh, deny what Mirza wrote. They cannot go back and deny what the second Khalifa wrote. They cannot go back and deny. So this way, they don't pu publish their books or, or most of their books. They don't translate them. They keep them hidden. And they just keep on arguing by saying they are progressive and how they are. They don't believe oh, in jihad and so true. on. So th this is my my is my uh, comment to them. Not you right. cannot believe your iman on such metaphorical or such poetic language, whether it is good, bad, or, or ugly. That that is not muhkamat. That that is not a strong foundation on which you can you can base your your uh, belief. Just on another quote of Mirza Sahib as well. Um, we give you gl we give you the glad tidings of a son with which the Haq will be manif manif uh, manifested as if God has dis descended from earth. Anything you want to say to that? Yeah, this is no, part I, of... I, uh, I should be given this the opportunity You're going to have the opportunity yeah. to after talk, after, talk after, inshallah. So th yeah. this because you said to me first that I'm asking you first and then I'm asking him after. So inshallah, I'm okay. now I'm asking him first and I'm going to ask you after. Yeah, to be fair. So I was going to okay. ask him a few questions. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, th this points again, in some of his revelations, Mr. Sahib says, I am like God's son. I am unto God like his son. No, answer his yes. question, what he has in, asked, brother, yes. Me, brother Mehboob has asked you yeah, yeah, for the yeah, promised son. God has come, come in that, yeah. This is the prophecy of 1889, okay. in, which, uh, um, in which he says that, or, or something like that, you know, that is the, uh, that is the Arabic word uh, that... Um, I'll translate it in English okay? for you. So, that. as God himself has descended on the earth. Now, this is something that makes a Muslim very, very upset. Uh, this this type of of uh, mm -hmm. ha language again uh, the uh, the Ahmadiyas will say it is metaphorical it is this it is that to compare human beings to God 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to compare a human any aspect of human existence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let alone say that as if Allah himself had come down to earth it is completely against uh, 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 the theology of, uh, of they become uh, shit, yes, yes it, 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 it does approach that you know okay. uh, I'm not the one to judge uh, other people okay. but uh, now that I've been out of that that cult I see this as uh, almost like uh, blasphemy uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure he understands and you understand, you know, when... I don't, that's why I'm asking. Okay, okay. Yeah. You see, this is the prophecy about the promised son, his second son, Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmoud Ahmad, that he was given the glad tiding that he will be given a son, yes, who will be very wise and Allah will help him and Allah will bestow him wisdom and he will serve the cause of Islam and Quran and Prophet Muhammad. This is about his second son, as you know. And if you don't know, I'm sh I, I think, I, I, I'm sorry to say this, when, they, when an example is given, in many other Sufi's language, you know, the word has been used. If you go on literary meaning, I want to ask you a very big question. Very big question about the literary meaning of Dajjal and his Gada. Tell me, where is that Gada? whose belly runs on fire and one foot is there. No, these are, these are authenticated hadith. Before, before Mirza Ghulam so Amun Qadiyani's grandfather was born. So, no, because he's using the same terminology. We don't pick up the words and say, you Do try you, okay. to express, okay. let me, let me brother, you. and you... Are you saying that these are taken out of context and, no. and it's been misunderstood? No, it's been things, misrepresented. Okay. Like he's been using the word cult. Okay. The, uh, there is no such word as cult. If you go to the hadith of Tehattar Firkomali jo hadith hai, there is mentioned, these are the words of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you should be scared of Allah when you mislead Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Forget about everybody else. I don't like so have fear of Allah. Like that. He said <laughs> that there will be 73 facts, uh, sects in my ummah, and there will be one who will be on the right path. Then Saba asked him, who are the people who will be on your right path? And he said, those people, who will suffer or who will be treated or who will be in the same category yep. as my sahabas are. Yep. So this is a big argument, you know, has to be discussed right. according to the context. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. 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 Brothers, I thank you sincerely both of you for coming today, coming along today. Uh, any last words, Mr. Mr. if you'd like to say to our uh, viewers? Very, very briefly, please. Eh? Yes, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. What, uh, what we are trying to do is, and why I came was to prove that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Khatam al -Nabiyin. Quran is the last book. It is the last Sharia of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, but yep. Nabuwat is not last. Shari Nabuwat, nobody can come with a new Sharia, but Zili Nabi can come and they Mr. will Mr. Mirza, thank you very much. Uh, Akbar, Brother Akbar, quickly please, if you want to address our audience. Yes, if you want to. Uh, yeah, it, it was a very interesting con conversation, and I I like to thank Ikra for inviting us here. What I would like to leave my Amdi brother, brothers and sisters uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, message that yes, you were born into this organization, and you are part of it, and you are conditioned to accept it. But please think of the modern world and think of Islam as a as a whole, and think where they stand, and and, and what what. Can, can they do or can you do for the whole Islamic cause as a Thank whole? You. Yes. Thank you, Brother Akbar. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. Uh, Jazakallah for watching today. Bef before we go, I just want to quickly leave you with this verse from the Quran, from uh, chapter 6, verse 93. And who can be more wicked than the one who forges a lie against Allah or says, this has been revealed to me when nothing has ever been revealed to him. Brothers and sisters, Jazakallah for watching. Uh, please keep making duas for us. Uh, inshallah, we may have another program on this. Until tomorrow, Assalamu Alaikum. Take care of yourselves. Assalamu Alaikum.